Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in squad in 2025 with the new Unreal Engine 5. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we're going to take a look on your Nvidia and Radiant parameter and at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now the NVIDIA app. Uh, so normally uh, before I was telling you guys to just select a game and uh, push the latest version of the LSS. But now you can do it in the global setting. I have a dedicated video uh, to, to show you how to do that. If you don't have that option over there, the DLSS override in global, make sure in settings and about you're using the beta NVIDIA app to have that option. So in global setting, what normally I recommend in the DLSS override, click on it and make sure that you're using latest. So each time you're going to open a game that is compatible with frame generation, reconstruction or DLSS, the super resolution, you will always push the latest version from NVIDIA. So you're not waiting on the developer of the game to push a new version of DLSS. So you will always have the best one and squad is compatible with this. So push that one. After that, uh, low latency mode, make sure this one is at on. Don't use smooth motion. Anyway, you have frame generation uh, available in the game. And I'm going to tell you a little bit later, but too much input lag anyway. And smooth motion is even worse. Max frame rate, I just locked my FPS at 237 FPS because I'm using G-Sync and I have a 240 Hertz monitor. So you don't want to uh, exceed your amount of Hertz because you're going to lose your G-Sync. So that's why I'm doing 240 minus 3, so 237 FPS. Shader cache size, I'm using 100 gig because I have the space on my disk drive. Uh, by default, uh, you, I think uh, NVIDIA is giving you 5 gig. If you don't have the space for 100, just go with 10 gig. If you install a lot of different games, this will help because you don't need to always rebuild your shader. Sometimes you can have corruption, stuttering and stuff like that. So this one definitely can help. Now let's go to the system setting. If you want to use your G-Sync, make sure this one is activated as you can see on your monitor and also normally you have a setting in your monitor so make sure this one is activated in the display properties make sure that you're playing your native with your resolution and make sure that you're using the is refresh rate on your monitor in the color option if you have an hdr monitor make sure that you're using your 10-bit color your full range dynamic range over there and also i like to put a little bit more digital vibrance in this game so at 55 uh the, the default is 50 it's less gray it's better to see enemies 
And in the performance tab, I'm putting my power maximum at 133%. So I'm going to send a little bit more wattage to my uh, GPU. But you need room on it. So what it does, you're going to get like a longer boost clock. So you can expect 5 to 7% boost in your FPS. But you need room. So you need good thermal. The algorithm from NVIDIA need to understand that your card has some room. So that's why they're going to push boost clock a little bit longer in the game. And it will be better for your FPS. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Now let's go to Radeon. So now for Radeon card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your FreeSync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, Fluent Motion Frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use Anti-Lag 1, this one is not good. Don't use a Radiant Boost. Radiant Chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be... 100% uh, utilization for me, so you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer, but sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed, just go to Assassin's Creed, and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in-game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging. But uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of per person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now inside of the game, in the game section, as you can see over there, you have the field of view. By default, this one will be at 90. I like to play my FPS at 104, but honestly, if you add more FOV, you're going to lose some FPS because you're seeing it a lot larger in front of you. So if you're struggling with your FPS, don't go too crazy with this one. For the graphics section now, really important window mode, play full screen. Make sure that your resolution is native depending on your monitor. I lock my FPS at 60 in the menu. To, uh, I don't want any thermal issue over there. Uh, my FPS in-game are locked at 237 because uh, I want to stay in my G-Sync range. If you want to unlock your FPS, just go at maximum as you can see over there. 
I'm going to go back to 237. I don't like the frame generation. It's compatible for uh, RTX 4000 and 5000 series. Honestly, uh, it adds too much input lag in the game. So I can't really using it. Uh, so I'm not a huge fan. You can also use the one from AMD if you want. Um, you can definitely test it out. You can gain a 35 to 40% boost in your FPS, but the input lag is pretty crazy. So I don't recommend to using it. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, definitely go with Enable if it's available to you. Don't touch, touch your resolution scale over there. After that, you have your upscaling technique. So you have a couple of options over there. Uh, the first one, for sure, if you have an RTX card, go with DLSS quality. It will gain a nice 10% boost in your FPS. I like to use the NIS sharpening at 0.35 also. Um, if you want more FPS, definitely balance can be good, 15% boost. But if you're playing 1080p, balance is, a, is too blurry for me. So definitely go with quality. But if you're playing 1440p or 4K, balance can be nice to use. If you have an AMD card, Go with AMD FSR, pretty much the same thing. Use quality. It's less, the image is less good than the DLSS, but you're going to get a nice 8% boost with FSR. After that, for the view, view distance quality, I recommend to go medium. It's a good compromise. At high and epic, you're losing too much FPS. At medium, you're going to gain a nice 10% boost. And low, it's a bit too low for me in this game. So you need a, a good view distance to see enemies. And medium is a good compromise. Material quality can run high easily. It's like 1% different for each bracket, except for a pick that you're going to lose 3%. So that's why I is a good compromise. Texture quality, it really depends on the amount of uh, VRAM that you have on your GPU. If you have 8 gig and more VRAM, definitely Epic at 16. If you have 6 gig, go I8. 4 gig medium at 4. And less than 4 gig, go low at 4 over there. After that, you have the shadow and lighting section. This one is the section that will provide you the most of your FPS. Honestly, I recommend to go with, with low and low. You can expect 15% boost in your FPS, but the game will look a little bit flat without uh, your global illumination quality at low and shadow quality at low. If you want to have like some kind of immersion, go with medium. But if you want pure visibility, just stay at low. Particle quality, this one at low, it's dropping your FPS like crazy. So definitely go low. Ocean quality, you can run medium easily. And after that, for the post-processing uh, tab, I really recommend to go with low over there. You're going to get a nice 5% boost and a lot better visibility. Uh, post-processing, adding a lot of like blurriness in the game. So that's why I recommend to go with low. Remove the motion blur and the tone hyper sharpening. I stay at 0.5. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my um, guide of squad for the Unreal Engine 5. Honestly, with modern computer, uh, like GPU who, who was made for um, D D DX12, the game runs, it's not that bad, but when you're using a card that was made for like D DX11, something like that, or even older than that, you will struggle for sure. It's really important to use the upscaling if it's available to you. And uh, yeah, if not, like just go low everywhere. Uh, it's pretty crazy. This game is not necessarily running well on all the computer. If you have any question about it, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I'll try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.